welcome to GoggleCam, the internet's first first-person video of how to do lab. I'm now going to show you how to put a sample onto the atomic force microscope and then we'll look at how to collect the image on the microscope. So first we want to obtain our sample and the tools for working with the samples and the scanner heads are stored in this toolbox and don't lose them. This little mini crowbar cost over $150. Your sample should be stored in one of the sample storage uh, boxes with a labeled position and you can see the organized box. There's three boxes of samples, three rows, eight columns. So once you know uh, which is your sample, you'll take it out of the box here. Before we get our sample out of the box, let's make sure the microscope is ready for the sample to go into. So when you approach the microscope, you'll uh, want to remove the dust covers and then we'll be at this point here. The microscope is actually right here and you can see that with the cover on, the dust cover on, and this also prevents sound vibrations from getting to the microscope, so you always want to operate with that in place. This is a vibration isolation table. It should be adjusted so that this metal pin is right here at, at the high-low mark. It should also be adjusted so the bubble is in, in the center there, so it's level. And you can see this is this uh, table is on concrete blocks, which also help block transmission of vibrations from the building to the microscope. So let's remove the cover, and it just rests on there, pull it straight up. And you can see the working part of the microscope. This is actually an optical microscope on a boom, so you can look down into the sample area. So this can uh, gently be rotated out of the way. This is the scanner head, which is plugged in to the power supply. You'll, to remove it, you need to squeeze the e edges of the plug and lift up. And there's only one way the plug can go in, so when you put it back in, be gentle so you don't force it the wrong way. The scanner head lifts straight up off of the motor pins. These are the micromotors that can raise and lower the scanner head. And then this is our scanner, and the, this is the magnetic sample holder, which will hold the sample disk in place. So for our experiment, this is the wrong scanner. We want the large area scanner. This scanner can only scan an area up to 5 microns. So it's the, we call that the, the small area scanner. And so we'll need to change that out. Ask your professor to do that. Now that we've confirmed that the large area scanner is in place, we're ready to look at the scanner head. The scanner head has a cartridge for the scanning probe, and often we call this instrument an atomic force microscope, but more correctly it should be called a scanning probe microscope because we can use multiple different types of probes to look at the surface on a very small level. This probe here is a metal wire for scanning tunneling microscopy, or STM. And that's not the experiment we're going to be doing today. Instead, we're going to do atomic force microscopy in intermittent contact mode, or also called, which is also called non-contact mode, or tapping mode. And since our instrument is an original digital instruments brand, we can use the term tapping mode because they copyrighted it. So this is the cartridge for using tapping mode and how do I know that? You can see uh, here a little, if you look carefully, there's a tan plastic wafer. You kind of see it through here as well. That is a small piezoelectric crystal that a voltage is going to be applied to which will cause the probe tip to vibrate and therefore tap the surface. Okay, the pre-mounted tapping probe is on this plastic wafer with the blue 
plastic strips. So let's go ahead and put a new tip in. The tips are worth about $30 and this is probably the only part you can realistically break. So it's not the end of the world if you make a mistake. It's only $30. However, it is $30 and I don't have to I don't want to have to replace it every time a student uses the instrument. The pre-mounting tapping mo uh, probes we purchased from Vico, which is now Brooker. Uh, that's the model number. This tells you the material. It's a silicon wafer that's been etched just like the silicon wafers used in Silicon Valley for computer chips. This also tells you about the size, length, width, yeah, so thickness, length, width, frequency, vibration frequency, and spring constant. And that's a range. And the back has a coating of aluminum to make it more reflective. And we'll see why that's important. Notice sheet here says to pull the sheet sideways. Uh, especially in the winter like it is now here in central Illinois. The air is very dry and so static electricity will cause this plastic to stick together. I don't want these plastic wafers to go flying across the room so I'm going to slide it across this way. This probe has been used and so I'm going to put it away up in this row here and I am going to release it. There's a spring right here holding the probe pre-mount chip in place. I'm going to use this expensive mini crowbar to get under the spring and pull up to release the chip. I don't have to use a lot of force, just enough to loosen this spring so I can slide this out. And if you prefer, you can hold this with forceps. With experience, you don't need the forceps. Now I'm going to get a new chip out and before I do that I want to point out where how the chip is going to rest in the uh, cartridge here. Under this the spring is going to hold it down but to get it in place it's going to rest on these three little rubidium crystals here uh, beads and you can see if we pull out a chip block, pre-mount block, it has three holes. So those three holes will rest on the three once the block chip is mounted in the cartridge. So again, I'm going to gently pull up on the spring, push this down into the slot until it locks in place on those three beads. Okay, it's locked in place. I do not want to touch this part at all. This is the shiny little trapezoid is the silicon wafer that's been etched and you can't see it because well, at least I can't with my old eyes. Off the end of this is that tiny little cantilever. It says here the cantilever is about a hundred microns long and 30 microns wide. So most people can't see that with the naked eye. But that is the delicate part. That's the part that could snap off. And actually we're looking at the bottom of it. If we turn it over, this is the part that's going to touch the surface. So now we're looking at the top of the wafer and you can kind of see it's got a shiny reflective back because it has aluminum coating on it. And that's going to allow it to bounce off of the laser in the instrument. So now we've mounted our pre-mounted tapping mode cantilever. The cartridge snaps into the scanner head. And before we put the scanner head back in place, we need to put our sample into the sample holder. So we select our sample, we're recalling where we wrote it down in our index and these are pieces of steel discs so they sit on that refrigerator magnet strip. 
set of instructions tell you how to prepare the sample onto the surface, but we put a glass cover slip onto the steel to pr provide a smoother surface. I usually slide the sample onto the holder because there's a magnet there and I don't want it to snap too much and disturb, maybe knock off my sample. So center it on the holder.